You know, before we start, me drinking soda all the time was going to be a running joke on Gamer Mouse, but I realized that would be really bad for me. So I'm trying something else. I like raspberries, so I got some raspberry lemonade. <sighs> Alright, now on to the game. Oh. Well, here we are in the crazy world of Crystal Quest. There's not much plot to this one other than get the crystals, go through the gateway, and don't die. So I'm just gonna say that it's a game about a really daring rapper who gets into a flying saucer to fight enemies who are guarding the ultimate intergalactic space bling. Hey, it could work. There's been weirder games than that. Crystal Quest is a game by Patrick Buckland and published by Green Inc., later to be Cassidy and Green, for the Macintosh in 1987, and is the first game that actually supported the color display of the Macintosh 2. Both Mr. Buckland and good old C&G will pop up later, I can guarantee it. I've played several of Patrick Buckland's Macintosh games, and Cassidy and Green was a big name in Macintosh games and software. If you ever used Conflict Catcher, you have them to thank. Ports were also made for the Apple 2GS, Amiga, Palm, and Game Boy of all things. It's also been more recently released as an iPhone game, and an Xbox Live Arcade game, so this little game's continued on to a next-gen console. I don't have a lot of gameplay of later waves, though. I know this game is supposed to be hard, the game even says it's nasty, but honestly, I think I just suck at this game, too. Doesn't help that I was using a trackpad half the time, though, but hey, when you don't have a permanent desk to work on, things like that happen. There's more than 40 waves according to the box, but I've never met anyone who played this game that actually got to the end of it, assuming there is an end to it. I've never met anyone who got to wave 40, even. Why? Because this game has a thing for killing you more often than KFC cooks chicken. I mean, look at this. Look at this! At its core, Crystal Quest is a very simple shooter. The mouse changes your ship's velocity, and hitting the mouse button fires a bullet in the direction your ship is going, the speed of the bullet affected by the speed of the ship. It is a bit irritating to hit enemies like this, but no one said that this game was fair. Well, the game says it is, but it says that it's a very nasty game. Now imagine trying to do this on a Game Boy instead of with a mouse. How did that port work anyways? You can also hit the spacebar to unleash a smart bomb, which eliminates all enemies and bullets on the screen. The game compares this to using an anti-aircraft gun to kill a mosquito. As you can tell, this game has an odd sense of humor. Like comparing the parasites that follow you to someone nailing your shoes to your feet, or suggesting that the abort command be used on someone about to beat your high score. Not to mention the enemy names, or the names of the nasties as the game calls them, with names like the Dumple, the Zarkle Phaser, the Tenta Warble, and the Shrap Warden. By the way, don't shoot the Shrap Wardens. They are nothing but trouble if you do. If you need any more proof of the odd sense of humor that this game has, just listen to it. I've had people wonder what the hell I was playing before. Although as a bonus, if you drag the sounds file out, you do get some old school sound effects. Though I do find the old school high score sound weird. Doesn't it sound kind of somber for a song that plays when you've achieved something great? That aside, I like the new sounds better, though that's probably partly from nostalgia from Crystal Crazy. However, this game does feel pretty luck-based sometimes. There are random mines scattered around the playfield, and they can end up very inconveniently placed. The crystals you have to collect are also scattered about randomly, and while I've never seen, say, mines start on top of crystals, the crystals will end up right near mines, clusters of mines, or even near the enemy spawners, which is even worse. Hitting either the spawner or the enemies that come out with no warning can both kill you. There are also enemies that can place mines all over, which look exactly like the crystals you're supposed to collect, at least in color. Yeah, you try telling the difference when there's enemies chasing you. The score you get is also based some on luck. There are bonus crystals that randomly come out of the spawners that can be worth anywhere from 10,000 to 50,000 points, 
And there's random numbers scattered around you can collect, which give you the indicated number of points. So I based my success more on waves past, but given that the score gives extra lives, it helps with that too. So that's kind of a complaint on my part, that a better score isn't a sure indicator of better skill. The rest of it is standard arcade shooter fare. Nasties that wander around aimlessly, nasties that fire bullets, lasers, and all kinds of other things at you. The other big flaw in here comes from the control. Not most of the time, usually it works well, I just suck at it. No, it's at the beginning of the level, when you first move your mouse, or immediately after you die and you have to start again. It will start off with the velocity that was at your mouse position, and that can send you straight into a mine right from the start which is really frustrating since there's nothing you can really do about it other than attempt to center your mouse before you respawn. And since you can't see your mouse, that's kind of hard. So there's two complaints on an otherwise fun, if hard as brass balls, arcade-style shooter. This game also came with something called the Critter Editor, and it let you change almost every aspect of the game, and came with an example, which you can see right now, to show how just a visual change can impact things. BOOM! <laughs> wow, I just blew up the earth. Graphics, sounds, point values, speeds of enemies, how often they spawn, how many crystals are in each wave, how much they're worth, almost anything you can think of you can change. It brags that you can change over a thousand values. You could even change the number of flashes on the smart bomb effect if you wanted to give your friends a seizure or something, I don't know. Hey, no, no, don't even try it. I know someone's thinking of doing it now that I've said it. You horrible person. Ugh. You know something? Lemonade just makes you more thirsty. Ah, well. This is Tanara Kuranov signing off, and next time I'll be looking at Crystal Crazy, the game I grew up with. And I'll also be looking for a different drink. Hey, I'm Dr. Kuranov, and we have a rather tricky patient in here today, Spin Doctor. I fail so often on this difficulty I'd be sued for malpractice.